Hey everyone, this week we've got another Marshall JCM 800 Lead Series Amplifier with some issues on the bench. So let's get started. And this one, as reported to me, apparently started with some volume issues, cutting in, cutting out, so I'm told, uh, as it was recorded. Uh, and then it was alleviated by replacing a fuse, apparently. And then it just started blowing fuses constantly. At that point, it was shut down and brought to me. So I'm looking at this as something that is definitely uh, pulling excessive current, and we're gonna uh, treat it like that. What I'm gonna start with uh, first and foremost is we're gonna we're gonna take it right out of the case. Uh, we're gonna put it up on its side and get it into a service position. Those who pay attention will notice that I am replacing my older armband with an easier to read version of that armband with the telephone number for uh, Florida Four Warriors and the Veteran Crisis Hotline right here. So you will see them in future videos as I, I tie this together for videos, making that easier to read. We can see four large Phillips head screws around the bottom of the unit gonna hold it into the cabinet. We're gonna remove those. The back of the cabinet does have the productive metal shield, so we're gonna be removing this first. With the back removed, we could see that there are four EL34s in here. Uh, these came from Tube Depot, uh, and I imagine these claim to be uh, burned in a match set. Uh, they're showing the values on here. We're gonna find out with the, uh, with the Hickok if that's really true. So we'll be looking at that in a bit. But right now, I would like to focus my attention on something more sinister. I mentioned this to folks with these amplifiers, and I say, you know, they're, they're not antiques, but they're on borrowed time. And we can see these capacitors are starting to bar it. I'll show an example of, here's, here's one that's, that's not, right? And we can see that if I look at the profile. Doesn't mean by any means that this capacitor is good. It just means that there's no uh, visual indication of failure, right? And I come to this one, and, I, and I'm seeing a little, yeah, there's a, there's a problem here on this one, right? But pay no mind to it, because we can see, looking back here, the filter caps have already failed. Look at the bulge on these. Uh, this, is, this is really bad. Uh, obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see to what extent they failed. You know, just have a look, but yeah, this is this is no good. These are going to need to be replaced. Hopefully it didn't take anything with it, like the power transformer, we're going to find out. Also, other things worth noting as an observation, uh, how hard it was to remove the tubes from the socket. The sockets are incredibly oxidized. That was quite difficult to get that EL34 out of there. Oxidation, bad capacitors, all around needs a service. Got the amplifier out of the cabinet now. You can see all the capacitors. Um, looking at them, I can see this one is a bit puffed up here. These two are right here. This one is slightly. I'm thinking this one is slightly. The one all the way to the left right here is the only one that is not. Yeah, that's something. Okay, we gotta take a look and evaluate any electrolytic capacitors under the amplifier as well. We can see, looking at this particular capacitor over here, it's already burned through the bottom. It's corroded through the plastic, and the electrolyte is coming out. You can see that mark? Uh, none of the others exhibit that, though there is one higher up on the board where I can't tell because it's, it's covered by the circuit board. Uh, I would imagine that one's probably not leaking, as, as I didn't see as much damage there. We have, as expected, uh, two electrolytic capacitors here. I would have to measure these to make sure they were still in good working order. These are uh, Nishikons, they're not cheap capacitors, but they are getting old, so you'd have to take a look at those. Furthermore, there's an effects board right over here. It can't be seen on camera, but within this effects board, there are more electrolytic capacitors. Uh, they are low voltage, so it, they wouldn't be causing a significant issue like we would find in these over here, but uh, still, I'm looking, I'm seeing several electrolytic capacitors on there. Uh, it would probably be a good idea to remove this, if only to do a quick inspection of those. However, there are ICs, we can see here, tied directly to those capacitors. Becomes a lot trickier now, because I can't just hook up my test set to that. It would blow up the ICs. The capacitors would have to be removed. 
or check with the ESR meter, there are some modern components in this amplifier, so that does present a challenge right there. I wouldn't want to do something like that and break it. So that's something to think about. I've removed both fuses from this unit. We have two fuses here. One is the mains, uh, the other side is the, the high tension, high voltage, right? And the mains is a, a 6.3 amp fuse for the 110 volt American model. And this one right here appears to be fine. A little, there's a little dark spot there, I think. It may well be in my head, but either way, it ohms out. So I'm gonna say that it's okay. And the correct fuse was found in the slot. This is what bothers me. And this is what always worries me about uh, working on these amps, taking on these. Uh, this is the high tension and this fuse is blown. And the description was, you know, that this amp kept blowing fuses. And when I take this amp out, and you can see the fuse is blown, right? But this is a three amp fuse, right? And when you put three amp fuses in here, you don't know what it's doing to the power transformer before the fuse finally gives up the ghost. And, uh, yeah, I, I really don't know what to say about this other than hopefully uh, none of the components in the amplifier are damaged. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And maybe we'll get lucky and nothing's damaged and we'll move on. Or uh, maybe we'll be getting a new uh, power transformer for this uh, amplifier. We'll see. I'm inspecting these tubes. They got their own code. This is a Whiskey Kilo 34. Uh, do you, I can't see what the other one is. There's a 4850, I think. Um, anyway, getting them out is uh, hellacious. I'm using some deoxit. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm working to socket a couple times with an old uh, 12AX7. So I don't accidentally damage one of the original ones, right? So I'm, I'm working at it and out there one at a time till I, till I get them all good. And I'm going to have to do that with the EL34s as well. I'm going to be measuring them on the uh, on the Hickok. All the tube sockets have been taken care of with deoxid, left that uh, subsequent mess, which I'll use to clean up all of the dust that's on top of the chassis. There we go. Quick cleanup. Get the dust off. Make it uh, better to work on. Definitely not 1250 on this one. Check the other side of this tube. We look at the other side, is just about right on the money. Uh, 1200 for 1250. So this one, one triode was uh, incredibly weak and the other one was right on the money. Uh, for a preamp, maybe it's okay. Uh, maybe it's something you wanna replace. Uh, for these original valves, I guess it depends on how it sounds, what you tolerate, but that was the first one. This one, on the other hand, read perfect and even emission on both triodes of the tube. So this one's just fine. This one's another example of one side being a perfect emission. The other side is being weak, uh, not to the extent of the first tube, but this one is just a bit weak on one side and just fine on the other. So this one is uh, marginally acceptable. And I have to defer to the European supplemental for EL34, so I'm gonna dial that in and test those four tubes now. These should stop at 6,000. We could see that it's stopping, this one's stopping at 56, so it's awfully close. We'll see what the other ones bring. This next one, see about, about 56, so this one's the same too. Very good. You can see when I pull the tube out that the needle goes into the green. Uh, it pulls so much current with the heater running that it's going to drop down to the negative and then come back up to the middle. So watch. There we go. Oh, there's something different here. Something not right with this one. What's going on here? Pull more current than I expected. We got ourselves a short. Looking down, we see when we put this tube in the test set, uh, the short is captured, and we can see also that the fuse light is illuminated. I'm not going to hold this on here for too long. The test set is designed to capture this, but I'm not going to run it for any length of time. I'm going to pull the tube from the socket. I'm going to annotate this is short. This tube is no good. This would cause uh, some serious damage. Uh, we're not going to run this. We're going to move on to the next tube, and we're going to have to order another one and see if uh, I could have one match with those values from Tube Depot. Yeah, that's a killer right there. Yeah, this one's cranking out. Uh, 
5600 right so this one is is testing good like like there's no problem so we had one one tube is a complete failure and let's just see that one more time for, for everybody's benefit this this tube is now marked as as a short right and when you have a, a test set like this and uh, tests that have different types of uh, lights that illuminate to tell you that there there's a short right so when you you plug the tube in that's that's always the first test you're going for and when you see that you don't you don't try and run any of the other ones so I plug it in now and that wasn't actually the first indication that I saw I go and check them what I saw was how much current it was pulling and the fact that the fuse lamp was illuminated is something that I don't see on a power tube unless it's under load like unless I'm actually running a test and that that was the second thing I saw so then I looked down saw that and, and knew that there was a problem so I'll show one more time see the fuse lamp is lit And you can see that, that that's out, and that's that's a, a, a draw right there. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to show. The new capacitors have arrived. They are top quality. Uh, we're going to get started and put them into the amplifier now. The first order of business is going to be the work on the capacitor up top here and this circuit board. Uh, this is going to be done simply by removing this board. This allows access to the top capacitor as well as... Uh, these two electrolytics right here. So I'm going to unscrew it off of these posts and uh, swing it over. I have all of the nuts and lock washers off. I'm going to be able to raise this board up, but I'm going to have to first remove some of these cable ties to provide some stress relief, making a notation of where the cable ties are. We can see that there are three here. There's one over here. Removal of these connections up here were enough uh, to be able to pivot the board over uh, to replace these connections as well as the capacitor up top. So I have no need to remove any more than I have to. As long as I can work comfortably and reliably, that's all I need. I don't need to take apart the whole amplifier. I was able to remove the first capacitor with ease from the back of the board. And I will place the new one in. Taking care, of course, to know what direction. I could see this one, that negative is pointing away from me. On this capacitor, lifting it up, I could also see that a negative is also pointing away from me as well. Got that first capacitor installed now. Second one has a bit more clearance. It's easy to put in. Okay, both these caps are in and soldered. Everything's done. I notice R28 has got a resistor piggybacked onto it right there. I want to check that out against a schematic that doesn't look right to me. Uh, so this is going to be looked at. However, I'm going to look past it right now because it's not really an issue that affects what I'm doing right now. Next one is the capacitor up here just behind the board. Uh, I'm gonna uh, dislodge it from the front. I'm gonna desolder the connections uh, behind the board. It's a bit hard to see from here, I realize, but I'm gonna do the best that I can and I'm gonna replace it with one of these. There's a nut and a flathead screw right here. A nut is behind there. I'm showing with one hand that relieves uh, the pressure here on this bracket and that secures this capacitor. We can see it's loose now. I'm gonna go around the other side. We can see it's connected by uh, these three wires right here. I'm gonna desolder them, pull it out, put the new one in, resolder the wires, and tighten it back down. And that's it. So I have the first one removed. We could see here uh, the first visual indication is that it has broken through the bottom, right? So the rubber right there. Not a good indication, even though the top didn't look too terrible. All these could be going on the test or later. We're going to see what the results these were. Here we have the new capacitor installed. We can see the uh, height of the capacitor is a lot smaller. Technology has made them smaller as compared to one of the originals. But this is a uh, same value capacitor. Looking at the other side, we can see that I have arranged it so that the standoffs are exactly in the same location. I can now uh, solder the terminals back on. Connection is now reinstalled to the new capacitor. That means all of the work is now done on this board here. Again, suspicious of this resistor. I imagine it probably had something to do with the inability to achieve uh, a required bias. I'm not sure yet. I really haven't looked. We're gonna find out. We're gonna get this board back into position. We're gonna reconnect these wires, redress them too and get this back into order here. And that's gonna bring us into the stage where we're gonna work on these five capacitors. Everything's reconnected now, the board is screwed back in. This portion of the job is now done. We're gonna be doing the next capacitor. This is uh, here on the lower portion of the amplifier. Yeah. 
there we go. That cap is now completed. Moving on to the next one. Get a screwdriver in on this one because of the way the screw is facing. So I removed the whole socket. There's really no bother. But I'm just going to make sure the screw is facing the way that a screwdriver could get in next time. While working on these two, as you can see here, as I take apart this, I'm going to be checking the values of these resistors, make sure they're intolerance. These are gold band resistors. This one shows 56K on the money. This is good. We'll reuse it. This resistor is also perfect at 56K.